All right, we are ready to get going. We are on chapter two, overview of the straight path system. This is kind of cool. It is late at night. It's 20 minutes to 11 o'clock. And my business partner and CFO, sorry, CEO, Steve Earl has just joined us and he has brought some Wendy's. Thank, thanks so much, Steve. Oh, you're welcome. Go, stand close to the mic, dude. Don't be afraid. This is this is fun stuff. All right. Now, before I get launching into this, Steve, just give us a little bit of your background, how you and I got started. I know that the book will reiterate it and hit it just a little bit later, but 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 inquiring minds want to know what's been your experience in real estate and how did this all get started for us? Just hit it briefly. Uh, well, my, my experience with real estate uh, started probably six, seven years ago. Um, got into it bit by bit. I, I first started out just flipping homes. Um, I was in the construction industry and one thing led to another and I ended up getting my real estate license and uh, created kind of a uh, something called the Earl Report, uh, which Chris got his hands on one day and saw that I was finding a bunch of different properties and so on. And so I started uh, finding Chris properties and he was buying them up as fast as I could find them. And uh, um, I was buying as many as I could as well, but uh, Chris was outpacing me by far. And uh, one day I remember I mentioned to Chris, I just said, hey, if you want to make me your exclusive guy, I will find all your properties. And what did you say to that? Amen, brother. <laughs> I was ready to go. Finally, a competent real estate agent. And it only worked because you were all you were an investor. That's yeah. the whole reason why you got your license. I love right. it. So, you know, after that, one, again, one thing led to another. Uh, Stephen and Kevin and Chris started up uh, REIC. And it was uh, several months later that Chris... Uh, convinced me to come on board and, and, uh, dude, and I had to convince that is the appropriate <laughs> adjective verb thing. It, it took like three or four, like serious tries, didn't it? Months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I can honestly say that, uh, that was probably, probably not probably it was the single best, best business decision I ever made was to, uh, go into business with Chris and to, uh, work on helping him with, uh, with REIC and, and kind of helping him take things to the next level. Awesome. Appreciate that. And we've got Stephen Miller joining us. And for this second chapter, guys, what I want to do is I want to hit the overview of the straight pass system. I want to get a lot of this out of the book. We're going to be also going off the record here. Um, we've heard the phrase, the devil is in the details. And you know what? It's true that many important truths get lost and hidden within details. You know what? It's also true, however, that the initial detail can overwhelm people. The purpose of this chapter is to really give a brief overview of the straight path system so that we can provide a broad context. And within that big picture context, the importance of critical details lies within the system and they cannot be overlooked. Once the context is established, the details of the system can be understood with much greater depth so that, and, and we're going to explain that all later in the book here. So it's going to be kind of fun. And no laughing, Steve. We get to mess up all the time in this. So we, we were, we, when we first started this recording, we said that we were going to keep a running tally of how many mess ups we, we had on the book. Steve, where are we at? Uh, I, I think we're already, already over our 3,000 goal, but, oh, good. <laughs> but awesome. we'll keep going. Ah, brain freeze. <laughs> My frosty's <laughs> killing me. <laughs> Wendy's will do that to you. <laughs> so guys, this chapter provides mostly a bullet point bottom line analysis. And you're re if you're relatively knowledgeable and experienced with real estate as an investor, you're going to love, you're going to easily identify with everything and the key components of this. And the details are going to come in the later chapters. So let's get started. I want to start with an analogy. Okay. And I've got a map in my book here and I want you to imagine this. I want you to imagine a picture of the United States. And I want you to imagine that you are in California and you've got to get to Florida. And there's a lot of roads that you could take. There's a lot of neighborhood roads, country roads, freeways. And you know what? There is a straightest way to get there. There is a fastest way to get there. And so often in life, so often in real estate, it, it looks like people are taking these detours and they're going off the path. And many people never end up at their destination. In fact, I don't know what your guys' experience has been, but most people I know that get into real estate within a year or two, they jump right back out because they went in for the money and they didn't realize, they weren't clear as the expectation that it was as hard as it really was. I mean, was real estate always really easy for you, Steve? Uh, no, my very first home, which I paid about 220, well, I paid 200,000 for it, uh, did some fix up on it. Um, in the end, um, on paper, I made 
like fifty six dollars and seventeen cents. So, but you're profitable. I, when I flipped it. Yes, <laughs> that's a good that's a good experience right there. <laughs> okay, so I love it. So what what I want to do is I want to give our our listeners um, a, a four step plan. When we talk about the overview, um, the four steps to the straight path of getting where you want to go the fastest way is you need a plan. You need to find the properties. You need to purchase them and then serve. Plan, find, purchase, serve. Okay, phase one, plan. The purpose of this first chapter is threefold. One, identify existing resources. Two, outline a 10-year portfolio game plan for applying and leveraging those resources within the system. And three, helping investors say, stay disciplined. The first and third element unleash the potential of the 10-year game plan. Uh, identifying and leveraging hidden assets expedites the process, while the delayed gratification ensures that you follow through on your plan and stick with it. So no 10-year plan is sufficient and effective without all three of these components. So let's talk about the first one, identifying and existing resources. Stephen, I know you're dying to read. <clears throat> Why not? Most people are unaware of their assets and resources that can be leveraged to produce greater income and net worth. These assets lay dormant and underutilized, resulting in lost opportunity costs. For some people, these assets may be enough to create a stable retirement in just a few years. You may be surprised uh, by what these hidden assets are. See chapters, let's see, three and four to find out. Understand that everyone has them, regardless of their circumstances. Unfortunately, few people ever recognize their potential, let alone leverage them. And Steve, this is why I'm glad you actually decided to step on in and, and to actually show up tonight so late, because with this 10-year game plan, you're the one that put together the spreadsheet that we now have on our website where people can go and compare, hey, what am I on, on, on track for with my 401ks, my IRAs compared to where could I be if I were actually doing the straight path real estate system? And so when we look at this, this game plan, once you get started with your assets and once they're clearly identified... The next step is to create this 10-year game plan. Steve, why do we focus on 10 years? Um, 10 years is, is probably a good amount of time that it takes to uh, actually realize something in real estate. It usually takes time. So nothing get rich quick here. Nothing get, get rich quick, no. Yeah, it's all got to be it's, it's all got to be realistic here. And, and so what we want to do is we want to identify the resources that are really in unproductive investments, and we want to put them into higher levels of productivity. Uh, a typical and very achievable plan results in an investor purchasing 20 properties over 10 years and making about $2 million. However, every single person that, that's listening to this, you've got a different situation, you've got different abilities, you've got different desires, you've got different everything. So doesn't it also make sense you're going to have a different plan? And, and one of the cool things about what we do at REIC is um, I actually take the time and other executives do to create custom game plans for every person that we end up working with. Now, I do some illustrations here in the book. They're kind of neat that show the difference between what you could be on track for versus what you could do working with our system. And what I want to do is I want to talk about long-term discipline because I think sticking to the plan can be one of those challenging aspects for people. The straight path system is significantly hindered when investors are unable to stay disciplined over the course of the 10 years or more. When implied in its purest form, the process builds on itself to provide exponential growth. When all profits are consumed, especially in the initial stages, only linear and sporadic growth is possible. So you'll find more detail on this component in chapters three and four. Keys to building the portfolio game plan though, as we get there are gonna consist of identifying all your different assets, uh, resources, uh, especially those that are hidden to you or, or resources that you didn't even really know could assist you in creating and building a plan. Uh, next is creating clear and detailed 10-year plan to give structure to your investing. The third one is to stay disciplined by sticking with the system and reinvesting your profits, especially in the early years. Okay, so that's the first part is you got to have a game plan. Now we're going to talk about the second phase of the system that kind of Steve was talking about, which is finding properties. And uh, the straight path system ultimately indicates that there's a couple of, uh, of rules here. One, we always want to buy real estate at massive discounts. Um, if it doesn't have at least a 15% discount, I I'm not even interested in that home of investigating it and considering it as a possibility. But once it has that discount, then it becomes a real possibility. So you've got to know where to look. You've got to know how to look. And you've got to know what properties to look for. And the fourth component, you've got to be wicked fast. Speed. Okay. Looking in the right places. Um, 
with other with with other real estate strategies and systems, they want to teach you to look at auctions and short sales, foreclosures, fixer uppers, and since the competition is stiff in those areas, it makes it really difficult to succeed. Whereas in contrast, in the straight pass system, we find properties on the largest listed property database, which is the MLS, Multiple Listing Service. Now you've got to know how to look in the right way. You'll save even more time and effort when you learn how to look at the database. So you can actually comb through all the different properties are there to know what really is a good deal and what really isn't. Because you know what? 95% of the properties we're not even interested in based on that rule that you've got to buy real estate at a discount. Looking for the right properties? Well, in the system, we're not just looking to make any deal. We've got strict criteria for purchasing a home. We purchase only single family residences. We don't purchase townhomes, condos, duplexes, multiplexes. Steve, why is that? Why do we stick to the single family model? Well, the biggest reason is that not very many investors are looking at single family homes. All the other properties you mentioned, every investor in the world is looking at those and therefore the competition for them is very stiff. Yeah, so where we're looking at getting a discount, if I'm looking at um, at, at, at uh, duplexes, duplex I think is a really good example where investors are always looking at duplexes and as a result, getting a significant discount on a duplex becomes super, super challenging. And it's not always the biggest cash flow like you might think that it is because a lot of that cash flow is created from having that discount. So um, the, the second thing that I want to point out here is that we always buy homes below the median home price. And, and Steve, why do we do that? The biggest reason for that is when you go to rent it, we always buy our properties with the tenant in mind. We want to make sure that individuals can afford the property, you know, those who are going to rent them. And then in the end, um, we want people to be able to afford to buy them. And so that's your largest market segment or individuals, you know, in that, in that price category. Perfect. And then the fourth component is speed. And there's a lot of power in being fast at things. Uh, because we use the most popular property database or the MLS uh, to locate different potential properties, speed is necessarily the, the essence and the most important part of our finding system because anyone can find the deals we are, but because we're combing through the market so regularly, we know how to get eyes on enough of the right kind of properties and opportunities to put them in front of our face faster and quicker than other people. So when we work with people, you want to make sure that you are prepared to purchase homes beforehand. You want to make sure that you're in a position to, to get the home under contract and negotiate it. And you need to have a really efficient style of negotiation. All things we're going to talk about in the later chapter dedicated specifically to how you on your own can find these really good deals. Because quite literally, they are here today, they're gone tomorrow, and most people are finding them on, on accident, not with a system. So a purchase plan includes being qualified by a mortgage broker. It puts, in, it puts you in place before you even start looking for properties so that when you get there and once you find the home, we can negotiate it. You can work on getting it under contract. And that's the critical aspect of the speed and in knowing how to negotiate a really good deal really fast. So our system eliminates the common back and forth dialogue and seals the deal the same day often before other deals can come in. In short, we win because we are wicked fast or, or as the book will say, extraordinarily fast. <laughs> so keys to finding and securing the best deals um, are you got to be prepared to purchase before you start looking. We want to avoid competition by staying away from common arenas. We want to leverage the time and resources of realtors. We want to be able to purchase single family homes priced with massive discounts below the median. We only want to purchase homes that are in livable condition that don't require big repairs. Uh, we want to use a focused search system to identify deals with the proper amount of equity, at least 15%. And then we want to eliminate a lot of wasted time on negotiations where you really risk losing a deal. So first step review is plan. Second step is find. Now we're going to go and touch on purchase, which is the third step of the four step system. Uh, REIC employs a really unique purchasing system. It's a proprietary financially uh, financing formula. And what it does is it enables us to help people with average jobs, average credit, do something actually very extraordinary something lending institutions normally don't allow us to accomplish, which is to leverage the maximum number of investment homes on a person's credit. Our, our, our formula, it's fairly complex, 
and it considers various banks and ratios, and then combined with our real estate system, allows us to purchase way more properties than you typically could if you're just going after rentals or using some other strategy. Uh, some of the factors that we're gonna consider is, is knowing how to use the right mortgage broker, selecting the right kind of loans, and then learning how to manage your debt to income ratio, which, which ultimately dictates how much or how little real estate you can qualify for. So let's go through these briefly. The right mortgage broker. Um, the banking industry is super complicated. I know because uh, at one point I got so skeptical of it that I went and got my own loan officer's license so that I could really come to better understand it. And that's what really started giving me the knowledge and information to know how to qualify home after home after home. So our clients are able to acquire multiple homes because we've learned the secrets of the lending industry. Even in today's market, where banks are deciding whether or not to fund investment properties based on how many mortgages that you already have on your credit, how quickly these are acquired, what banks you're working with, how the files are submitted and put together, and what you're doing with your properties, that just is to name a few criteria. We've learned how to maximize your ability to acquire the most investment possibility, um, the most investments possible. Ultimately, our formula for leveraging several homes on your credit requires us to use banks in a specific combination so that each additional bank allows us to accept your next investment purchase. So we're gonna get a whole lot more into that when we go into the chapter that's dedicated to purchasing real estate. Now, as far as, as loans is considered, maximizing your portfolio also requires using the right kind of loans possible. For example, if your goal is to pay off your home over time and you select a 30-year or a 15-year mortgage loan, then the strategy is going to cap out very soon and you're going to qualify for only a fraction of what you could because of what you've done to your debt-to-income ratio and the amount of liability that you've actually leveraged onto your credit. So instead, we want to leverage loans that have a mixture of, of the lowest interest rates and at the same time will allow you to keep qualifying for homes again and again and again to maximize those benefits of a very specific formula that we're gonna talk about. The last one super critical is optimizing debt to income ratios through something you're gonna learn a lot about we call it compassionate financing. Steven, super quick, because you've been such a massive part of this. In a nutshell, what is compassionate financing? Compassionate financing is providing a service, uh, making something available to the tenants of our investors that they otherwise wouldn't have available to them. In other words, we're helping them actually purchase homes where they otherwise wouldn't be able to. Perfect. I just needed a few bites of my frost. Fantastic. So one major factor in, whoops, we're skipping that part. Here we go. One major factor that determines your success in the loan process is your debt to income ratio. And I'm just going to put it to you very simply. If you have done real estate before, and if you've been a landlord with a rental, then chances are purchasing that home has, has put a certain amount of debt on your credit. And when you've rented that home out, the banks will actually factor that home against you. But with what Steven just shared, the compassionate financing, we can actually show you how to bring in significantly more money on the deal that will actually reverse your debt to income ratio and make you more attractive, attractive to the banks so that they will continue lending. Yeah, we're typically getting 10 to 20% higher rents than, than normal. You got it. So, so we use some fairly creative financing. One of the best aspects of the straight path real estate system is that it can be applied to virtually everyone, no matter what your, your history, your situation, the state that you live in, your credit. And for those that, that, that cannot get approved for traditional financing, we've actually created a program called Home Buyer Assistance Program, which you can learn about on any of our websites, HBAP, Home Buyer Assistance Program. Stephen, what's that? Uh, it's just a phenomenal program. Again, this is where we're we're focusing in on either the first time home buyers or the tenants of our investors, helping them actually be able to repair their credit, learn about budgeting, learn about mortgages, how to take care of their home, and then essentially in the end, how to buy homes at a massive discount, so that they're moving from this position of I'm a renter, I'm a victim, to a position of I'm empowered and I'm an owner and I'm actually doing these things. I finished my frosty. Thank you. You're welcome. So let me be let me be super super clear. Real estate, as I've said before, is going to keep saying no to you. I don't care your financial situation. If you have the desire to succeed and you're giving yourself no other options than success, then we can even teach you how to use creative real estate to get into real estate where you may not have to use credit. You may not have to use any of your own money. And again, that's one of the cool things to learning about this super realistic strategy we call straight path real estate is we know how to get creative on these things. So 
if I were going to briefly give you an overview of the keys to purchasing multiple investment properties, it's use the right mortgage broker. If you don't have one or you don't, you don't have a good team put together, then reicglobal.com. reicglobal.com is a good place to go and check that out where we can actually, we've got an existing team in place. They can step in and assist you with that. Uh, the next thing is we want to teach you how to become profit conscious rather than rate conscious. We want to teach you how to go with banks that let you buy the most real estate versus necessarily having always the lowest interest rates. We want to help you use specialized loan programs that will maximize your debt to income ratio. And if you're unable to get approved for traditional financing, then let's get creative. Because while the world keeps saying no, it doesn't have to say no to you. Now we've covered our first three, which are plan, find, purchase. And the final step in the overview of our system is what we call service, serve through compassionate financing. And Stevens just briefly told us about that. Let's see what the book has to offer. Uh, every component of the straight path system is important, but compassionate financing is the engine that makes it all run. Compassionate financing is a rent to own program, similar to lease options with other seller financing programs. It's a powerful and highly profitable system for the following reasons. Number one, it incorporates the best elements of lease options while eliminating the flaws. Two, it relieves investors of the time and effort required to maintain rentals. Three, it generates much higher profits than either rentals or flipping. And four, it provides substantial benefits to tenants. And I'm going to say this right now. If you are listening to this and you have a rental, then if you will follow the steps outlined how to in this book, you're going to be able to make close to an extra $10,000 each year per property. And that's certainly a good reason to look, to take a really good hard look at this. So let's talk about leasing and the benefits of that without the flaws. And let me just pause for a sec, because Steve, it's, it's 11. Do you want to step out and, and go grab? I know that you've got to go pick up your daughter. Yep. Do you want to do a final shout out, though? Yo, yo. <laughs> <laughs> that's coming from a very- This is Steve. <laughs> that's coming from a 40-year-old conservative Canadian that wears green jeans. <laughs> Steve, thank you for bringing the Frosties awesome. by. All right. Love You're it. You're welcome. Take care. See you in the office we'll tomorrow. See you later. Appreciate it, Steve. Take care. Okay. Leasing. The benefits without the flaws. Almost everyone wants to own a home rather than rent, but there are many who are unable to qualify for traditional financing. So a lease option gives renters the opportunity to purchase a home within a specified period of time and if certain conditions are met. Renters like the lease options because it's often a gateway to home ownership. In fact, this is kind of cool, Steve. You you know about this. Um, oh, yeah. One of the first tenants I ever put into a home <laughs> actually is in the process, not only bought it, but is in the process of buying an investment. Actually did that two weeks ago and has now put a family into the home doing the same program that I did with him years ago. That's awesome. I mean, man, to see that full circle of helping people get into home ownership. However, lease to, op lease to own options can be risky for many home buyers because of the way many greedy or misguided investors apply them. These investors collect large non-refundable option considerations up front. They stipulate a short time period for the leasee to purchase the home. And if the tenants aren't able to get traditional financing, they boot them out of the house and begin the process all over again with someone else. Many actually hope their tenants will be unable to purchase the home. And one of the key elements of sustaining investing is serving individuals. And this compassionate type of investing um, exists to serve people because Steve, when that service component is there, man, I, any business you're doing, if you'll simply help enough people get what they're looking for, or what they want out of life, you're also gonna get what you want. So if you're gonna be in real estate, for heaven's sake, do something that is doing a service to people. Most strategies like we'll see next chapter, exist to take advantage. I, I've got to rob from you right. so that I can win. And the more I rob from you, the more I win. And this is just a very different approach to real estate. So in contrast, the end goal of the compassionate financing, I want my tenants to purchase the home, man. I, I'll, I'll give them a cut of the action so I can get my money and my down payment and turn one home into two. And with my plan, keep growing my portfolio.
Well, you know, it's interesting. So many people that are predatory are just seeking that quick ten or fifteen or twenty thousand dollars, get a renter in, and then get them back out for another ten or twenty thousand dollars. Well, the fact of the matter is, is with our system, if you will just stop being greedy for a second and actually serve someone else, your profits are so much higher than just getting that additional fifteen or twenty thousand dollars. You know, which is why we've implemented a number of revolutionary elements, including home buyer assistance program, so that we can actually help the investors buy the home. We're giving them um, great opportunities opportunity with actually having, you know, if I buy a home at a massive discount that has a lot of equity, then I'm actually passing the, some of that on to them so that they can get the same opportunity. So the potential ultimately, if we, as we sum this up, is there's potential for way higher profits than just rentals. And it's way easier. It's way less time. Um, one, you receive anywhere from an extra $50 to several hundred dollars more a month than a rental. Mm -hmm. You collect a down payment up front, typically five grand. Uh, that can average out over a two-year contract to an extra one, two, or three hundred dollars a month. There's seventy-five to hundred and fifty dollars a month you are not paying in property management fees, and you never have to pay for repairs, which can add up to an extra fifty to two or three or four hundred dollars a month. Right? Furnace goes out. Who's got to pay for it? Me. That's right. You do. The guy with the with frosty, the frosty in my mouth. In my mouth. <laughs> awesome. So, so there's a lot of things to talk about here because the property maintenance, unlike rentals, the compassionate financing, we don't have the property maintenance for investors. And since the contract stipulates that tenants are responsible for all maintenance, it simply frees up a lot of time, effort, money on our part. The next is service to tenants in the community. Uh, I'd say that the thing that I love most about compassionate financing is that it provides tenants huge benefits that they can't get in any other way. You know, it may free you from having to repair toilets or give tenants the opportunity to make improvements and feel as if they're really creating a home environment. And that's difficult for renters to achieve. Tenants have the feeling of control and ownership and that they're buying time to improve their credit. In fact, the home buyer assistance program, we go in and just improve it for them. Because Steven, in your experience, are they going to do it on their own most of the time? They don't ever. So we got to step in and say, hey, it's available now and you can do it if you want it. Just take it. Exactly. So they can take advantage of this opportunity of home ownership, which by the way, was so cool. I, I look back to my own heritage. My father came from Germany. He moved here a number of years ago. And when he immigrated, uh, it's because he wanted that home ownership. He bought five acres of land out in Washington, uh, in Redmond, outside of Seattle, and, and, and built a 6,500 square foot home on it for his nine kids. I'm number four. Beautiful home, by the way. Yeah. And I mean, I, there's some powerful memories that were created back in those woods. And that concept of home ownership was so important to him and has transferred to me. And where 33% of all Americans are renting, uh, man, I am super passionate about helping people get into home ownership. So let's talk about the keys to compassionate financing. And that's going to summarize up the rest of this chapter. Um, by giving tenants the opportunity to purchase a home, you relieve yourself of the burden of property maintenance, decrease your risk, and increase your profits. Amen. Number two, you eliminate the predatory nature of lease options as well as the risk of lost depreciation by using better contracts than standard contracts. Number three, you help tenants purchase homes. It serves them better and makes you more profit in the long run. It's so cool. I'm, I make more money by helping you get more of what you want. And, four and final, fourth and final, compassionate financing gives tenants substantial benefits, such as the ability to, to make home improvements, time to improve their credit, the opportunity to build equity. In exchange for these benefits, they're willing to pay more up front as well as on the monthly basis. So listen up. Once you've got through the four step, the, the four step and the four phase straight path process, that's what we've been talking about, planning, finding, purchasing, and serving. With one home, things really start to get excited since your success builds exponentially. The more properties you buy, the more you're able to buy again and again. One home can easily become many over time. I know because my first year, it started with one home and the next year it became three and the year after 15, and then 50. And Stephen, you've seen it. Hundred, oh, yeah. Hundreds of homes. Yep. So this is what we refer to as achieving critical mass, which we're going to talk about in chapter eight. And critical mass, very simply, that's creating the whole snowball effect through the discipline of delaying gratification and repetition of the system. You can create exponential growth, even infinite growth, by leveraging your time and efforts with the right kind of power team. You know, obviously the straight path system is much more detailed than what I've covered in this brief chapter, but I've wanted to give you a taste for where we're headed and for you to know that we're going to dive 
into the mechanics. We've talked about mindset. We'll be doing more of that along the way. And, and right now we want to actually take the next chapters to guide, to, to dive right into um, the different elements and why we've chosen this and why this is the best system. And then the rest of the book is going to be going into the specific details on the how to do it. Because when I get a book like this, the real estate book I've always wanted to read is the one I've written. And I hope you love it as much as I do. It's not just because it's my name on the cover, but because this system has given me the single best strategy in all of real estate. It's created the wealth for me. And it has been a massive part of my overall financial liberation.